Hi all, I have an absolutely fascinating game to show you from a theoretical perspective. This is Stockfish 10 versus Leela 61133. Now I hadn't specified um, all the starting moves to DCAP uh, who created some games recently testing out the latest networks and I found this curiosity that in fact uh, the opening here, Stockfish 10 playing white, we have the start of a Sicilian Sveshnikov but um, the book here ended after b5, bishop takes f6 at this point. So we didn't specify g takes f6. And you would expect Leela perhaps to play g takes f6. That is the theoretical move us humans usually play. If you look at chess based live book, there are basically 7,497 games with g takes f6 and only 14 games with queen takes f6. So queen takes f6 is not taken seriously. So the reason it's not taken seriously uh, is basically this big tempo game, knight d5. And here there's thought to be two main ways white gets a big advantage. The first is uh, the quite sharp looking move bishop takes b5 which is played in this game. Uh, another alternative more positional is c4. It seems if we follow c4 though through does does black definitely uh, suffer greatly here. Uh, this is just an example I was experimenting with earlier and it seems as though okay white's got the big light square clamps but black has dark square play as well. From a technical point of view this particular position is assessed by uh, Stockfish, my engine and uh, analyst at the moment, as roughly equal. So uh, this is just absolutely fascinating. If there isn't a clear bust in this line is it playable? It looks as though there might be some, some issues. Uh, this dark square bishop, is it potentially useful? But anyway, this is supposed to be the sharper kind of refutation of the whole thing. Bishop takes b5. And this is the game continuation. So a takes, knight takes. So white is threatening knight c7 check. Funny enough, there has been an over the board game featuring a 2385 B Anderson against Salvador uh, C. This was played in Buenos Aires 1978, which saw uh, rook a7. So the player with black was much lower rated, basically more than 300 points lower rated, but managed actually to get an interesting game after knight takes c3, the knight going back. It does seem a bit of a waste of time having to go back there. And uh, white uses what seems to be the clear trump cards of this position, the two connected past pawns. Uh, but black managed to get uh, some play here off the knight b6. Bishop b7. Black actually went really aggressive with rook f6 here. Queen c7, rook h6, super aggressive. Off the queen d8 here. Queen c5, it looks as though that's interesting using that pin. f takes, f takes, bishop f4, but there is a bit of a counter attack. White tried to uh, just get rid of black's attack with that. And queen d4. Uh, we have though black countering quite strongly now with a nifty move knight f5. This is a really this is a really strong move actually. Uh, if e takes then queen h4 and it's getting really tricky. There are there are huge ideas now. For example, queen g1 f3 or h3, there's queen takes h3 check. So this was a really nifty move. Uh, knight f5. We have queen f2, knight g3 check, and black played another nice move to finish the game here. Can you guess? Rook takes h2. Yeah, because if taking, then there's, let's put this on the board, check and mate. But yeah, apart from this game though, most, most of the wins are with white. It's not supposed to be theoretically good. Uh, this position for black. However, Leela doesn't actually play 
rook a7 but plays queen a5 check and technically this is a little stronger than rook a7 so we have a sort of opening curiosity I thought here c3 if b4 this doesn't really help knight takes b4 uh, just king d8 and white doesn't really want to suffer a double uh, check so if knight takes there's a double check for the knight and queen and then taking here and taking on a1 black's doing very well so uh, c3 and we have now rook a7 and this is a slight improvement over that interesting stem game uh, this knight is not having to move here so we have knight takes queen takes and you might think well surely this isn't played because you know white's got these two connected past pawns coming at black and that's going to be the end of the story eventually isn't it yes you would think uh, now this is only a blitz game though this is a three minutes with two second increments but it's stockfish 10 with white surely stockfish 10 is going to annihilate leader in this line which is very rarely played uh, by us humans this line is just totally avoided usually so we see a4 it looks a reasonable move a4 knight e7 the knight goes back uh, if knight takes e7 it seems as though black might actually uh, be able to get a stable looking position actually with a blockade potential if white allows it but uh, okay knight e3 knight g6 white castles bishop e7 b4 black castles a5 so it seems stockfish is using the imbalances in the in the from the opening as Silman would put it the, the favorable imbalances here surely these two connected past pawns uh, are going to be really great black otherwise has two minor pieces for a rook which is usually quite good on its own but because of these two connected past pawns surely this is to be condemned this position okay well we have bishop b7 uh, so that hits e4 e4 is protected knight f4 we have a6 does that suffer a6 the bishop goes to a8 and the bishop's still kind of functional actually so it's acting as a block in a blockading role long term black's got a nice well temporary block blockade with the queen but also can this bishop help in a blockading role things could get interesting c4 rook c8 rook f b1 and we have the move h5 so this is pretty curious isn't it h5 h3 knight e6 so black is wanting to use this d4 square and get a nice knight on d4 knight f5 white is prepared to punish black and surely that will be far too much now for black to handle structural damage there on knight takes d4 but we do indeed have knight d4 so what is this about look at this structurally black now is accepting dreaded in theory double pawns as well as in theory two connected past pawns with white's asset there it looks really good for white in theory doesn't it but in practice what does white have to do here okay what has actually happened here we have the move b5 this looks logical but it seems <laughs> intuitively here bishop d8 looks like a promising blockade doesn't it queen b3 queen, bishop b6 where where has white's trump cards gone and it's these trump cards which have put everyone off playing this whole line with queen takes f6 i thought this is quite fascinating uh you know theoretically uh it's just meant to be absolutely terrible and yet okay stockfish may have mishandled this somehow shouldn't be getting this blockade black surely should not have this position all he has done is accepted double pawns to get rid of white's knight which might have been a mobilizing force for these past pawns and without that mobilizing force the bishops actually don't do the job of just blockading the pawns they also are pointing at white's king potentially both of them are quite aggressive bishops in their current locations so they have potentially a dual purpose but can that actually see the light of day here queen d3 queen e7 black does seem very very stable here f3 we have g5 super aggressive king h1 
queen e5 rook f1 queen f4 it seems white is doing nothing here at the moment just waiting the past pawns just don't seem to be that interesting right now uh, we have rook d1 king f8 and now in fact black seems to be playing for a win what would be the point of evacuating the king if it wasn't to try and blast open this king side maybe rook c1 king e7 queen d1 king d7 black has a really vicious plan now leela is conspiring a super vicious plan here of the queen d2 we have the move f6 white dare not play f4 e4 dropping looks at g2 opening up that bishop rook fd1 rook h8 it looks as though this uh, rook is going to have some power after g4 potentially rook g1 g4 rook g f1 yeah stockfish has just been waiting around i think it seems to have completely mishandled the so-called favorable imbalances and is just sitting there waiting planlessly now we have king c7 h4 looks like a concession h4 rook e8 f takes g4 this looks like another concession but if white waits around any further with king g1 then there's going to be g takes and check here with rook g3 this looks really nasty uh, so for example this position uh, so that d3 check can be played without any c5 is black's going to be winning a ton of material basically in this situation for example like that as one little example so it looks as though this is getting desperate f takes yeah it liberates this bishop all of a sudden the blockading bishop is quite dangerous bishop takes e4 queen f4 and the queens come off d3 this pawn is also now quite dangerous rook d1 h takes g4 rook takes f6 g3 trying to seal a mating net it seems taking away escape squares for rook h8 black's up to no good check king b8 rook f6 bishop c5 protecting d6 b6 that's actually taken the rook this rook goes back a7 sorry king a8 a7 and actually it was adjudicated here a win for black black has actually an easy winning procedure in this position uh, for example bishop f2 just with the big idea of rook h8 c5 rook h8 so that is a mating net for the white king if white has to give up material like that it's pretty hopeless there's nothing going on for white at all and it's black with loads of past pawns there so I thought this is a fascinating game theoretically uh, it's interesting to me that um, such an extremely rarely planned played uh, opening variation with Queen takes f6 is actually playable in practice against even stockfish 10 and we were talking orders of magnitude uh, less frequency we're talking 14 games in the chess space book for queen takes f6 so if you want a novelty weapon to bring out for your blitz games maybe this is it this is just not meant to be on the map this move is not meant to be on the map because of knight d5 and one of the key ones is bishop takes b5 and yet we have this game <laughs> i thought that was quite amusing i don't recommend queen takes f6 in general but maybe in blitz chess it could be a bit of fun it's not theoretically to be recommended g takes is theoretically the way to go and you get lots of interesting ideas like the g file as well when, once you play g takes so although you accept double pawns you've got an active rook on the g file but i just thought this was uh just uh, a curiosity this game a real curiosity from a theoretical perspective okay i hope you did as well find it interesting and if you want to check out the more theoretical side of this fetch the golf uh, there's a free lesson here by i am chess explained on king's crusher tv slash magnus so um, the official routes offer the best resources in general uh, but sometimes yeah maybe even the unofficial are interesting to know about at least for your like fun blitz online games and surprise weapons
Okay. Thanks so much.